to Property Ladder, the series that shows you how to make big cash profits from bricks and mortar. This week, I'm in Crouch End, North London, to meet 28-year-old Katie Basham. Katie is a first-time buyer, and the only way she can afford to get on the property ladder is to go 50-50 with her father. Together, they've bought this five-bedroom, two-storey maisonette above a loud and busy bookies. Her father has paid cash for his half, but Katie has had to get a mortgage for her share. We thought it was a good opportunity for to get Katie to get onto the property ladder, and also we could actually invest some money in some property in London, which neither of us could do that by ourselves. The plan is to renovate the property in just six months. Katie then plans to live there and let out the other four rooms. Katie has to make the project work. She is committed to a whopping £100,000 mortgage, which she won't be able to afford if she doesn't rent out all four bedrooms. Amazing colours. Oh yeah, uh, good work. This five-bedroom flat is in a terrible condition. Stripping the flat of the bright colours alone will be a big task, but it also needs new windows, central heating, complete rewiring, a new kitchen, and two new bathrooms. So how much did you buy the, the flat for? Um, 185000 And you bought it with your father, is that right? You've gone half and half. That's and right, yeah. So we're doing a 50-50 split right down the middle. How much are you planning on spending on it? At the moment, we've got a budget of 20000 to spend on it. Your plan, I believe, is to rent it out, is that right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I do want to live here as well and just rent the other rooms out. Um, hopefully, planning on doing it up nicely so I could get about £400 a week. So you're going to be getting a return of about 10% on your investment? Yeah, it's, it's a start on. I'm a first-time buyer. It's my first Absolutely. time. <laughs> Katie bought the flat with her father for £185,000. They plan to spend £20,000 on it, making a total investment of £205,000. And then they plan to let four rooms for £100 each a week, making a total income of £400 a week. She will then split the profit with her father, using her £200 a week to cover her mortgage and running costs. £20,000 is not much considering how big the flat is and how much work it needs. In order to keep costs down, Katie plans to oversee the project and do all the decorating herself. And she can only afford to spend six months doing it. With a full-time job and no experience whatsoever, she faces a big challenge, especially as the rental market has taken a downward turn. Rents have been suffering. There's also a lot of property coming onto the market, so that people have got more choice. But, but for the old, the old way of judging it was used to be £100 per room. That was the rule of thumb. That has changed now. That's coming down quite a bit. It's £60, £70, £80 pounds per room now. To fight off the competition, her flat has to stand out. Katie will be one of five individuals living in this maisonette, and in order for them to happily share this space and have some privacy, it has to be very carefully designed. Katie plans to live in the largest bedroom on the top floor at the front of the house and plans to rent out the other three smaller bedrooms on the same floor. These sharers will use the small bathroom on this floor. Downstairs, there's a large sitting room at the front of the property. Next to this is bedroom number five. And behind the bedroom is another bathroom and finally the kitchen. I can see an obvious improvement to this layout. I think having uh, a bedroom behind the sitting room, especially with so many sharers going, living in a flat like this, um, I'm a bit concerned that that might be difficult for the person who has a bedroom just behind the sitting room and noisy. And this kitchen at the back could easily be the bedroom. And if you move the kitchen into the room behind the sitting room, oh, right, so you yeah. had a bedroom with a bathroom next door at the back here, which would almost be like a non suite suite. The solution is simple. 
I would move the kitchen into the fifth bedroom and knock down the internal walls so the kitchen and living room would become a very big open plan area. I would install double doors so that these two rooms could be separate or kept as one big communal space. The old kitchen would then become a very private fifth bedroom with a bathroom next to it. I mean, you've got to replumb this kitchen anyway, so it's, if you had a kitchen here that was satisfactory, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. But since they're so gutting it anyhow. Exactly, you're ripping the whole thing apart anyway, so really putting it here or there doesn't make a great deal of difference. It will actually be a much nicer way of living. Yeah, oh God, okay. I'll think about it. <laughs> I feel a bit slightly overwhelmed that Sarah's given me so many ideas and I've, I've for such a long time now I've had it in my head that I'm going to do this with the kitchen I'm going to do that with that bedroom and um Katie has to discuss my idea about moving the kitchen with her mum and dad a helping hand from your parents is one great way to get on the property ladder but not everyone's as lucky as Katie there are other ways you can break into the housing market if you don't have much money. Buy an ex-council property. You can buy in a great location for far less money. Buy jointly with a friend. By combining yours and a friend's earning power, you increase your borrowing power in a joint mortgage. Move out. If you're city-based, the further away from the centre you move, the cheaper it gets. Just moving a few streets away can save you thousands. Rent a room. Bradford and Bingley have launched the first ever mortgage for those who intend to rent a room. This takes into account the revenue you will get from a lodger. Rent and buy. Many housing associations run schemes which can enable you to part rent, part buy a property, which makes it easier to afford. So if you want to get on the property ladder, buy X council you can get a real bargain, get a joint mortgage to increase your borrowing power, rent a room, the rental will enable you to get a bigger mortgage, or rent and buy, check out housing association schemes. Or if you're fortunate like Katie, ask your parents for help. I still can't get Katie to make a decision about the kitchen, but she is beginning the mammoth task of stripping the flat of its lurid colours, starting upstairs in one of the bedrooms. Oh, this is good. <laughs> Are you a bit scared of doing all this? No. <laughs> Should I be? You should be. <laughs> I don't want to be. I like it. I don't want to be scared. Don't scare me. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Have you broken down your budget at all? Have you worked out where you're spending the no, 20,000? No, not at all. Because that's quite a good exercise to do, and that's just just sit down and, and write down all the things that you think need doing yeah. or need to be done to the flat. And then just break down the budget so you have it in sections, how much you're going to spend on each section. Because it, it's really the only way to stop the, the money running away with you which is a terribly easy thing to do. For only £20,000, she has to put in new heating, new electrics, a new kitchen, two new bathrooms, replaster the entire flat, decorate and furnish. She's going to have to spend very carefully to make the project a success. Tell me, um, who are you actually marketing the property to? Um, professionals, I suppose you'd call them. Um, it's going to be well done, it's going to be well furnished, well, it's going to be partly furnished, the kitchen is going to be modern, it's going to be a modern flat, so I'm going to try and aim for people, professional people who want a bit of style as well in their life and are willing to pay for it. So, does Crouch End have what it takes to attract young professionals? The answer is yes. Crouch End attracts an affluent market with a large disposable income. It attracts this market because of its trendy bars, restaurants and quaint boutiques. But the young professionals Katie is targeting tend to buy, and if they do rent, are unlikely to be interested in sharing with so many people. Katie's most likely market would be students or low earners like nurses or teachers. But 
Crouch End doesn't have big colleges or a hospital close by, and the most worrying thing is that it has no tube. All these elements may make it harder for Katie to rent her rooms. If you're buying to let, always think who you're marketing your property towards. Choose your location carefully and make sure it has good transport links. Location is presenting an immediate challenge for Katie, who's investigating another possible expense to add to her list. The noise from the bookies underneath is traveling into Katie's flat. Katie is concerned that it might put off potential renters, so she's called in expert advice. One of the problems is you've got a lot of airspace here, so the noise is reverberating inside this airspace between their ceiling and your floor. So that has to be filled with some kind of damping material. I will give you a rough and very approximate guide for the floor, which would be somewhere between 1,800 and 2,500 pounds. And that's for both rooms, it's not just this room, that's for the... Uh, for no, the this would be for this room. That's just this room? It is, oh, yes. Two grand. Well, absolutely, I'm afraid so. <laughs> Katie is considering the sandproofing quote, but there's another more pressing decision she needs to make. With the rental market saturated, Katie has to make the right decisions. The most important one being to take my advice about moving the kitchen. This flat will only work if the communal rooms are next to each other. It's six weeks into the project, and I hope she's made the right decision. I'm dying to know, have you listened to anything I said at all? Yes, I have, and I've thought about it very carefully. Um, we've all got together, actually, and had a really good think about lots of the things that you came out with. Um, one of them was this room, wasn't it, to turn into the kitchen and have the kitchen as the bar bedroom, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and have you decided to do that? No. No. The reason being, I'm just thinking about the future, about when we eventually sell it. Yeah. We can sell. I, I like the fact that the kitchen's away from the living room. This room is that would be a much bigger kitchen breakfast room than the room that you're that is currently a kitchen. Right. And you say so you'd have a kitchen breakfast room, which would have a separate entrance, and you'd have double doors that you could either keep shut and have it as a separate room, or have it open. Anyway, on your head be it. Yeah. <laughs> and what about the soundproofing? Soundproofing, I'm still in two minds about. I think that it's it would be really worth um, getting the carpet in and getting the rooms finished and seeing how bad it is then, because I really think it will be amazingly improved, especially if you put insulation between the joists. So the quote came in at two thousand pounds for this room. Just for this room, yeah. So the other room would be at probably three, because it's bigger. Yeah, because it's bigger, I suppose it would. Yeah. So that would be five thousand mm. pounds, which is a quarter of your budget. Oh, when you look at it like that, yeah, it is. Which is means that you simply Pointless. can't do it. Katie is a young woman with a full-time job and little spare time. She's put her social life on hold to get onto the property ladder, but she is blissfully unaware of how much is involved. She hasn't done a budget and fails to see why the kitchen needs to be moved. She simply isn't thinking like a property developer. My fear is that she will overspend massively, be stuck with a half-empty flat, and be unable to meet her mortgage repayments. Katie Basham is struggling onto the property ladder by developing this huge five-bedroom flat in Crouch End, North London, where she intends to live and let rooms. Two months have gone by and Katie still hasn't done a budget and is still stripping wallpaper. This is a huge project for a beginner like Katie and I think she really needs my help. Have you written your schedules and have you got... Has your plumber and electrician done their work? Uh, the electrician's done his work, but he's got some things to finish off. Um, the plumber, I'm having a bit of trouble getting hold of him at the moment. Because you haven't um, managed to get that far ahead, considering it is eight weeks. And one of the things I think that's really important is you need to really get yourself organised. You need to, it's really important to have schedules and lists and to contact people and have everything booked in and to order everything. Because if you don't get yourself organised at the beginning, 
um, you can lose the momentum of the site running because you'll you, you'll find there's delays along the way, mm. and um, those delays will just there'll be like a hiccup in the works. We've had a few hiccups already. <laughs> <laughs> One of the problems with with people who try and do um, work to houses and have full time jobs because it's a constant battle on the telephone mm. to try and get them to to arrive on time and, and you know, to, to to schedule different people in at the right times around each other mm. is it's a, it's very hard work. Being organised is an essential part of property developing. I need to get Katie to write everything down so things can happen at the right time. Katie may not be good at writing lists, but one thing she is very good at is shopping. Katie is choosing her kitchen with her mum and dad. There's nothing like a bit of retail therapy to put a smile on a girl's face. Five thousand pounds. Mm. That's including. Oh, yeah, that's including the there's a dish, uh, washing machine, the fridge, the um, extractor fan, the cooker, the hob. That's a quarter of your budget. Yeah. I'm not even fitting it, just supplying the kitchen. Yeah. It does seem an awful lot of money to be spending, A, on a rental flat that is going to take some hammering. Mm. Um, and B, it's not a lot of units. That, I would have thought this kitchen should be about two and a half. Really? To three. Certainly, certainly nowhere near five. That's my first kitchen I've bought. <laughs> I'm not good at buying kitchens, I'm good at buying clothes and shopping and things like that. I can't buy a kitchen before. The kitchen in a large rental flat will take a real hammering, and I'm not sure that Katie took this on board when choosing her kitchen. Still, there's time to convince her to change her order. If you're going to rent a flat for a long time, you're actually better off putting in a cheaper kitchen and keep replacing it every few years rather than a more expensive one that gets more and more tired all oh. the time. People want clean and new. Yeah. And that's, well, it's understandable because if I was renting, I'd want clean and new. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. It's entirely awesome. understandable. Yeah. Another thing that's a good idea is to, to have your washing machine and your fridge as freestanding rather than built-in. Oh, built-in, I think. Built-in certainly looks nicer, mm. but it's not an expensive flat to rent this, and it's an awful lot easier if something goes wrong or you need to replace them, just sliding it out and sliding yeah. it back in. Come <laughs> And the other thing that's... But the other thing that's a, a really good idea is is always have a stainless steel sink and resist the temptation to have any other colour sink because they're so much easier to keep clean. So the perfect rental kitchen will have cheap new units, people like clean and new, freestanding appliances, which can be repaired or replaced more easily, and a stainless steel sink, by far the most practical option. Katie is also in danger of overspending in the bathrooms. What kind of bathroom have you ordered? Um, a roll top bath. My word. I know. How extravagant. But just uh, the only thing is, is that you really need a shower, and roll top baths are very difficult to get a shower around the end of. Yeah, hopefully, I mean, the bathroom upstairs, that will be a bath with a shower. So in this room, you'll just have a bath, and upstairs you'll have a bath with a with shower, shower head. head. Yeah. So there's a lot of people living in this flat to only have one shower. And also, I think you can easily fit a shower in here. I think you'd be better off with a standard bath. You have a piece of glass down the side, and you'd, you'd then have two bathrooms with two showers, which has got to be a better selling point. Oh, so I still, have, still have a bath here, so bath with shower? Yeah. Okay. Roll-top baths are expensive and impractical. These bathrooms have to cater for five individuals. Katie's budget would be better spent on installing cheaper plain white bath suites. As many baths and showers as possible to accommodate five people all going to work at the same time. The right combination boiler, which delivers constant hot water so no one is left with a cold bath. She needs to make both bathrooms as easy to clean as possible with wall-to-wall -wall tiling. And enough storage to organise five people's cosmetics.
Whether Katie takes my advice about the kitchen and bathrooms is up to her. But there is one point I need to draw her attention to. Letting rooms involves far more serious issues than Katie realises. It is great to rent out rooms. It's a great idea. But you just have to bear in mind that when you have three or more people, it is more complicated. You need to submit floor plans to your local environmental health department at your local council. Right. And the fire officer there will check the flat and he may well ask you to have a fire system, fire doors and extra fire security measures. Right, okay. Whereas if you rent the whole flat as one flat, you don't need to submit those floor plans because it's not a house with multiple occupation, you're just letting the whole flat. God, I'm going to be busy. You're giving me a lot to look into. <laughs> Katie has indeed a lot to think about, and I'm concerned that not only is the rental market depressed, but now she needs to find extra money to install the correct fire precautions. Three months into the project, and Katie is still spending every weekend stripping wallpaper. But there are some other developments in the flat. The central heating is being installed and the electrics are nearly complete. And Katie has finally seen the light about the layout of the reception rooms. It was actually one of Sarah's suggestions that the room next to the lounge to knock through and have double doors and have that as a kitchen instead of um, a bedroom, which I was going to have it. Um, so we've gone for that. And what we'd really like to do is knock... Um, the whole wall through, so instead of having double doors, so having it all open. What made you change your mind and take my advice? Um, it was mainly mum and dad actually that they, they persuaded me more. We were I was working upstairs one day and they were in here, and it, once all this plaster had come off, they could see through into the next room and they could visualise it a bit easier. And they were like, "Ah, oh, looks good. Could be good." Are you going to put doors in it? No, we didn't want to put doors in it. I think it would be a really big mistake to not put doors in here and just have an opening. Mainly because it is a five bedroom flat and that's a lot of people who are going to be living here. And to only have one reception room and not give them the flexibility to be able to shut the doors mm -hmm. and use it as two reception rooms, I think might put people off renting a flat. I'm really pleased Katie is taking my advice, but she's added her own spin to it by making it completely open plan. I feel the double doors are vital. They would increase flexibility by providing the option of having two separate rooms when the need arose. Katie's relocation of the kitchen will have to pass an inspection by the building regulations officer. But before then, there's a wall to be knocked down. At last, a bit of excitement. As this is not a supporting wall, Katie and I exert some girl power. Katie may have made the right decision about the kitchen, but she doesn't have an overall grip on the development. Her costs are rapidly increasing, and she's unconcerned about being behind schedule. She hasn't made the connection that every extra day added onto the schedule puts more pressure on the already groaning budget. <laughs> the project runs the risk of hurtling out of control. First-time buyer Katie Basham is developing a five-bedroom flat in Crouch End, North London, which she plans to live in and let four rooms in order to pay the mortgage. Juggling a full-time job with doing up the flat is taking its toll. Nearly five months have gone by and there's little to show for it. There's still no kitchen, no bathrooms, and Katie's enthusiasm is beginning to wane. It's so boring. Mm. Just uh, the whole time, like, for, I don't know how many, how many months we've been stripping the wallpaper I think and you, the walls. I think you started in... What, January? January, yeah. And it's just got boring after yeah. a while. Young people today have to go to great lengths to get on that property ladder. Katie has spent all her free time over the last five months in the dirt and grime without much progress. It's back-breaking work. 
preparation work always seems to take forever, but it's worth the wait, as the better the preparation, the better the finish. At this point, Katie needs moral support. The best way I can help is to try to get her budget organised. So the reason I brought you here is because at this stage it's really important that you're very clear about where your money's going and what the plan is next and and maybe look sort of try and get more organised I think okay. at this stage. Okay. So how much were you originally planning on spending on your budget? Well we we allowed twenty but we knew that we'd go over a little bit but so it was twenty thousand yes. initially. Yeah. Okay. And and those areas, do you know do you remember how much you were planning on spending on each area? God, no, not at all. Um, no, I can't remember. It was just sort of like, oh well it'll be around about that will cost about that and so the uh, twenty grand. That's how we it's the wrong way of doing it really, isn't it? The reason you need to make a, a budget at the beginning and stick to it is because that's the only way you can work out whether the deal works mm. for future developments, yeah. it's the only way that you can work out whether it, it stacks up as a deal. But as long as, I mean, at this stage, if you can write down everything that you've spent so far mm. and um, and uh, come back to me with the rest of the things that you know you need to spend, okay. then you should be pretty much on track. Mm. We're just too casual about it, I think. <laughs> I should really be more on the ball. It's the way I work, though, I'm afraid. It's hereditary. <laughs> Katie just can't afford to be laid back. It's now six months into the project, Katie's original deadline, and the flat is nowhere near finished. Katie still hasn't grasped the fact that time is money. She simply can't afford to run too far behind. But there is progress. The windows are being replaced and the plastering is underway. Having single-handedly stripped the flat, Katie is now hard at work painting endless rooms white. I've managed to paint almost all of upstairs, all by myself, I add. Um, we've just done a base coat of white everywhere. It's just boring, especially white. It's really boring. It's just... <laughs> I keep noticing, I keep saying, oh, it's really boring, this, but it is. Katie and her father can just about afford to allow themselves an extra two months to finish. The flat is not yet ready, but there's noticeable improvement. Oh, look at my kitchen! Oh, wow! Isn't this great? Yeah. It's a new kitchen. It's not finished yet, but obviously. It's really light, isn't it? Yeah. So, have you decided to put doors in here or not? You decided not to? No, we, no we're not going to bother. I think you might find it might be easier to rent, considering how many bedrooms it is. Mm if there was some form of screen here. But I just think that with five bedrooms, the ability of being able to close these two rooms off would be nothing but a good thing. But however, it looks absolutely fantastic. Double doors would give Katie the option of having two reception rooms. Without them, it may end up feeling like one giant kitchen. And uh, have you decided to do the soundproofing that you were initially planning on doing? No. Good. <laughs> it's too expensive. So, so idea. what flooring are you going to do instead? Um, we've got the wooden floorboard, the, you know, the clip stuff. Mm -hmm. We're having that all throughout, so the same throughout. So, so no carpet? Carpet only in the hallways and stairways. Stairs and, and landings are noisier than other rooms because mm. people tend to run up them. Mm. But you may, you may find in the future that it makes a difference in here to have a carpet fitted, but it'll look great. Yeah, a bit like this rug. Yeah. Katie's roll top bath has arrived, but it's not in the bathroom yet as it's causing a problem for Katie's plumber. Well, where we're standing here is where the bath is meant to be, and it's too big. The, bath. the bath's too big, it goes straight up against the toilet. So. So, what are you going to do then? <laughs> well, Later. having the shortening in the bath. Which is. Which Probably the best option if you could change if the, it. You end up with a standard type bath mm. rather than a roll top, which seems a shame since right, you wanted that. Mm. I'm just not sure that this bathroom is big enough for the effect that you're trying to create with a roll top bath. The only other option you've got really is to shorten the bath. Ooh la la. 
There is progress, but there's masses left to do in a short space of time. So you've now got a month until you're hoping to let this out. And there's quite a lot to do, isn't there? I think the only way that you stand a realistic chance of achieving that goal is to sit down and think very carefully about what needs to be left to be done. And you need to write a list of everything that needs to be done and work out what has been done and what hasn't been done and what there is to be ordered and what there isn't to be ordered. Mm. I mean, this could go on and on and on forever and and you have to finish it in a mm. month. So, so it is achievable. It is certainly achievable. Oh, I'm sure. Not only does Katie have to finish the flat, but she needs to make it really sexy to be sure of letting it. So I'm taking her to the West End of London for some inspiration. I thought we'd come here because this is one of the Hilton's first contemporary designed hotels, really to inspire you to think about the interior of your flat. Because I know that in August, which is when your flat's going to be coming up, up to let, the Barrett Home Development opposite is going to be coming on the market as well. Oh, right. And shortly followed by a uh, development of 50 new flats, which is just up the road from you. Not only has the rental market taken a downward turn, but Katie now faces daunting competition. These developments are very impressive. They are immaculately designed and they will have gyms, shops, bars and other top-notch facilities. I'm becoming increasingly concerned that Katie may face real problems letting her flat. A lot of those flats are likely to be bought to buy to let and they're going to be in direct competition with you. So you have to concentrate as much as you possibly can on the interior and how you present the flat because if you don't get it right i think there is a danger that you might end up with it empty for a long time which is a landlord's worst nightmare i think it's worth you going around inspiring places like this to give yourself ideas of themes and and details which will really make the flat look its absolute best Obviously, this is high-end, cutting-edge, luxury, chic design, which would probably be a little over the top for your flat. But there's elements of it that you can steal as ideas to put within your flat. And if you start thinking about it in advance, you can gather these ideas, the lighting, the use of different materials, furniture, to make your flat look consistent throughout, so that it all comes together. All right, okay. To increase Katie's chance of letting her flat, she needs to create the wow factor. This means providing one or two gorgeous extras which will stand out to potential tenants. And the good news is, it doesn't have to cost a fortune. Lighting is key. A couple of carefully chosen fittings can go a long way to achieve that luxury look. A large mirror in a room provides an opulent focal point. Search around auction rooms. This one cost only £60. Details make a difference. Chrome fittings, door handles and curtain poles look the part but cost under a tenner. If you're lucky enough to have good floorboards, sand and varnish them. They look great and need no maintenance. A big beautiful plant is an inexpensive way to dress up a room. Before buying the frills, Katie needs to buy the basics, and that means furniture. Knowing how much she loves shopping, I'm keeping control of her checkbook and making sure she buys what she needs rather than what she likes. So what have we got? Let's look at the sofas. Okay. Because that's really relevant, isn't it? The colour's important in a rental flat. A, to have washable loose covers yeah, and to have a dark colour that doesn't mark. Yeah, we're going to go for, well, I want to go for a chocolate brown sort of colour, which oh, hopefully will go with the, the feel of the rest of the flat. And these chairs are quite cool. Yeah, I like these. Tenants aren't very good at looking after things, and so if you get quite flimsy chairs, you'll tend to go through quite a lot of them. Whereas those look quite sturdy, although they are expensive, but it might be an investment. Now, as you're going to put 
beds into the bedrooms. Mm -hmm. I personally feel that with rental flats, you're better off having a cheaper bed that you replace relatively often. Mm -hmm. So there's no point in spending more than about £150, which you can get a very comfortable bed. And they're great and they last for two or three tenants and then you replace them with a new mattress. But what about the windows? Here, you see, they're nice, simple, plain navy curtains, $14.95. That's exactly pretty much what we put in our rental flats. Is it? So to add that final flourish to your property, add feature lighting, mirrors and plants, washable covers, sturdy dining chairs, plain curtains and cheap beds. Katie may be ordering her furniture, but the flat is nowhere near ready to accommodate it. She's really up against it. She's behind schedule and eating into her savings with lost rent and mortgage payments. And the flat has to be finished to a high standard to give her a chance of letting it in the competitive rental market. It's only achievable if Katie gets her act together and works very, very hard. It's September and eight months since Katie started renovating her five-bedroom, two-storey maisonette in Crouch End. Katie plans to make her money back by living in the flat and letting out four rooms to tenants. After nothing visible happening for months, the flat all comes together in the last two weeks. Carpets are being fitted. The bathrooms are being tiled. Floors are going down and the kitchen is being completed. Katie is two months behind schedule, but has pulled out all the stops to get the flat finished. It's now down to her mum to add the finishing touches, which will make the flat look its best for potential tenants. I'm relieved there's no colour here anymore. I'm glad it's all finished and I'm more than pleased with the result. More than pleased. Just need to get some doors on. I've got any doors yet. Katie has taken two extra months to finish and she's over budget. The big question is, will the flat stand out from the crowd to ensure she gets her money back? Gosh, this looks a bit better, doesn't it? Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Over the last eight months, Katie has made a heroic effort to get on that property ladder. Who would guess that behind this facade is a gleaming and extremely stylish five-bedroom flat? Upstairs, there's not even a hint of the garish colours left. The bedrooms are now light and airy. rooms will provide the perfect blank canvas for tenants. Maybe a little too blank, a cupboard here and there wouldn't go amiss. I am a bit concerned with a rental flat having the floor painted white because it's not very hard wearing. It will take quite a lot of maintenance. Yeah, it'll add character. Well, the wear. The wear and tear. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll, we'll get some rugs, I reckon. Just put some rugs down here and here. I do hope that with so many people living in the flat that the wooden floors won't be noisy. Though the carpet on the stairways and in the hall should help the noise, I am worried that it'll be high maintenance for Katie. With all those people traipsing on it, it's going to take a real thrashing. has been refitted with a new white suite. The upstairs bathroom, though small, is fully tiled with a shower and a funky basin and stand, which Katie and her parents designed. The downstairs bathroom has tongue and groove wooden panelling, which is not resilient to constant moisture, but the black and white colour scheme is both practical and sophisticated. However, these bathrooms are also crying out for storage.
downstairs, the room which used to be a kitchen at the back of the house has made a good sized fifth bedroom. All this room needs now is a carpet. But the real pièce de résistance is the living space. The kitchen and living room are now combined. The former bedroom has become the kitchen and the wall has been knocked through to create a contemporary open plan living space. You can still hear the bookies downstairs, yeah, can't you? Yeah. But considering it's a living area, that's not really a problem. No. I noticed you didn't put the doors in. I know, but it looks so nice. The kitchen is both functional and attractive. But for five people, it could do with a few more cupboards and more work surface. Katie's chosen a neutral colour scheme with wood strip flooring and pale furnishings. The room is finished with simple white blinds. The flat looks gorgeous and is very minimal and stylish. But as soon as you get five people in here with its pale colours and lack of storage, it will probably get trashed really quickly. But practicality aside, Katie has had the vision to make it look like this. But does the deal stack up? Katie's original budget was £20,000. Throughout the entire eight months, she has never kept on top of her budget, and it's only now that she has added up all the costs. Katie actually has spent a total of £26,000. 16,000 on building and decoration, 5,500 on the kitchen, 1,200 for two bathrooms, and 3,300 for fixtures and fittings. But add to this the fact that the project has taken two months longer than originally planned, there are also extra mortgage payments, and two months in lost rent plus professional fees. Katie's total amounts to almost £30,000. That's 50% more than the original budget. So, Katie, have you enjoyed doing up the flat? Yes, and no. <laughs> <laughs> Which is more? More no? More, more yes, yes, more yes, yeah. More yes. Only the occasional no, but yeah, I have. It's uh, good. Was there times where you just thought, I just can't stand it a minute longer? Yes. It just seemed never ending at one point. It was when we were doing all the prep work, it just. It's just every single wall virtually had to come down, so it just seemed awful. I felt like I wasn't getting anywhere, but as soon as the plaster was up, the paint, the paint was on, then it felt like it was all worth it. Would you do it again, the project, if you started? What, this place? Yeah. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would. Now, now we've got to this stage, I think I would. So, after all her hard work to complete this enormous project, Katie now shows me she's learnt enough to be able to make a hard-hearted business decision. I'm definitely not going to live here. Why have you decided not to live here? I just think it will be easier on the tenants. I'll be able to get tenants easier if the landlady isn't living here. I have something that's a very wise decision. Yeah. yeah. So, one thing I feel about the flat is that it looks great, it's beautifully presented, but it is very pale carpet, pale floors, pale walls. It's very neutral in effect, and that it's a very calm flat, mm. but that is going to take quite a lot of bashing from mm. tenants, and you will find that there's a relatively high turnover of carpets and repainting the walls mm. and damage done to the flat with this very neutral decoration. The real test is the estate agent's valuations and whether they think they can achieve Katie's target of £400 a week. Well, the open plan kitchen reception area will work well, probably work better for flat shares than maybe if it was sold as a family unit. Good size room. Like the, the white makes it just feel so big. You may have problems with tenants fighting over who's going to have this room. It's great. You've got the separate shower on the upstairs bathroom as well. Most people, especially if you've got four or five people living in a house together, would definitely need two bathrooms, so that's good planning that that's got that in. I'd rent this flat for £375 a week. I would expect to get around £400 a week. I would let this flat for, for £450 a week. £450 a week. The agents are confident that Katie and her father will be able to rent out their property and get the £400 a week they need. The rental agents feel they should be able to get 375 
400 and two said 450, so four rental agents that came round. So that you should be able to get between four and 450 a week to rent a flat. Now that Kate has decided not to live there, I think there is a better alternative to renting out the flat. It's going to be high maintenance and I'm worried that the rental market is just too risky at the moment for this type of property. I believe Katie and her father would do better to get their money out now and sell on as quickly as possible, while the market is still high and the flat is looking its best. Katie and her father bought the flat for £185,000 and have spent £30,000 making the total expenditure £215,000. I asked the agents for their sales valuations too. Her sales price is probably going to be around the £250,000, £260,000 mark. I value the flat for sales at £289,000. I would put this on the market for £350,000. But will the sales valuations change Katie and her father's minds? They've come in at figures of 250 to 260, 289 and 350. 350. 250. Yeah. 250. And 350. 350 is nice. So what do you think you're going to do? Do you think you're going to rent it or sell it? Sell it. Sell it. <laughs> <laughs> sell it. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> If Katie and her father sell for over £300,000, they could be looking at a healthy profit. You'd be making about a £100,000 profit, even if you took the middle ground of those valuations. Mm. Which, if you take the capital out of this, your half of that would be forty to £50,000, and that would be a very good deposit for a flat. Mm. I think it's very important with another project that you really do drive it along within budget and within time scale because there is a tendency to let things roll on and on and on and on mm. and whilst i do think you've done a fantastic job and the flat looks amazing i do think you could have done it quicker katie has been very lucky with this project she has been indecisive and disorganized which has caused her to overrun and she has lacked any kind of financial planning which has cost her and her father dearly but she did buy a property with huge potential and has worked very hard to create a stylish flat which she could sell on for a great deal more than she paid for it. The property is now on the market. I hope Katie will take seriously what she's learnt from this development as she moves on to her next project. A five bedroom flat above a shop won't sell overnight but it's great value for the area and I feel confident with it looking so fantastic that it will sell for a good price over the next few months. The secret to successful property developing is buy the right property, stick to budget and always renovate with your target market in mind. Do this and you could end up cash rich and well on your way up that property ladder.